right now. I am recording right now. All right. <clears throat> so last we left off, they were just like explaining <clears throat> how um, how people are made, how there are different casts. Casts? Yeah, I think it's casts of people. Yeah, different casts of people. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and yeah. How they're uh they're conditioned to like some things and not others and how they're conditioned to you know withstand heat and stuff like that very genetically modified very <clears throat> all right let me see how much i want to read today today Okay. Uh, well, I do not know how much I want to read today, but let's say until 3.30. Yeah, 3.30. 3.30 sounds good. All right. So now we're on to chapter three. Chapter three. Outside in the garden, it was playtime. Naked in the warm June sun sunshine. Six or seven hundred little boys and girls were running in shrill yell with shrill yells over the lawns or playing ball games or squatting si silently in twos and threes among the flowering shrubs. The roses were in bloom. Two nightingales soliloquized in the boscage. A cuckoo, yeah, a cuckoo was just going out of tune among the lime trees. The air was drowsy with murmurs of bees and helicopters. The director and his students stood for for a short. Uh, the director and his students stood for a short time, watching a game of centrifug centrifugal bumble puppy. Twenty children were grouped up in a circle around round a chrome steel tower. A ball thrown up so hard. Uh, a ball thrown up so as to land on the platform on top of the tower, rolled down into the interior, fell on a rapidly revolving disc, it was hurled through one or other of the numerous apertures pierced in the cylind cylindrical ca casing, and had to be caught. Strange, mused the director as they turned away. Strange to think that even... Our Ford's days, most games were played without more apparatus than a ball or two, and a few sticks, and perhaps a bit of netting. Imagine the folly of allowing people to play elaborate games which do nothing whatever to increase consumption. It's madness. Nowadays, the controllers won't approve of any game unless it can be shown that it requires at least as much apparatus as most complicated of existing games. He interrupted, he interrupted himself. That's a charming little group, he said, pointing. In a little grassy bay between tall clumps of Mediterranean heather, two children, a boy about, of about seven and a little girl who might have been a year older, were playing. Very gravely and with all the focused attention of scientists intent on a labor of discovery, a rudimentary sexual game. Charming, charming, the DHC repeated sentimentally. Charming, the boys politely agreed, but their smile was rather patronizing. They had put aside similar childish amusements too recently to be able to watch them now without a touch, without a touch of contempt. Charming? But it was just a pair of fools 
but it was just a pair of kids fooling around. That was all. Just kids. I always think the director was continuing in a, the same rather maudlin tone when he was interrupted by a loud boo-hooing. From a neighboring shrubbery emerged a nurse, leading by the hand a small boy who howled as he went. An anxious-looking little girl trotted at her heels. "'What's the matter?' asked the director. The nurse shrugged her shoulders. "'Nothing much,' she answered. "'It's just that this little boy seems rather reluctant to join in the ordinary erotic play. I noticed it once or twice before, and now again today. He just started, he started yelling just now.' Honestly, put in, put in the anxious little, put in the, honestly, uh, put in the anxious looking little girl. I didn't mean to hurt him or anything, honestly. Of course you didn't, dear, said the nurse reassuringly. And so, she went on, turning back to the, to the director. I'm taking him to see the assistant superintendent of psychology just to see if anything's at all abnormal. Quite right, said the director. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, does it say this? Does it say anything? I don't think it mentions it, or maybe it does, but later on. Yeah, there's a lot of things I forgot that this book talks about, and it's really uncomfortable. But they do grow, he like humans to be sexually mature at like a super young age so maybe they're I, I i i don't know No, it was is a it was a rudimentary sexual game. Not reproductive game, sexual game. Yeah, which is crazy, yeah. Yeah, I think they explain it a little bit more. Hold on. Maybe, I'm not sure. Like vaguely. Um Quite right, said the director. Take him in. You stay here, little girl, he, he added, as the nurse moved her, moved away with her, still a howling charge. What's your name? Polly Trotsky. And a very good name, too, said the director. Run away now and see if you can find some other little boy to play with. The child scampered off into the bushes and was lost to sight. Exquisite little creature, said the director, looking after her. Then turning to his students, what I'm going to tell you now, he said, may sound incredible. But then, when you're not accustomed to history, most facts about the past do sound incredible. He let out, uh, he let out the amazing truth. For a long period of time before the time of our Ford, and even for some generations after, afterwards, Erotic play between children had been regarded as abnormal. There was a roar of laughter. And not only abnormal, actually immoral. No. And 
had therefore been rigorously suppressed. A look of an, a look of astonished incredul incredulity 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 uh, appeared on the faces of his listeners. Poor little kids not allowed to amuse themselves. They could not believe it. Even adolescents, the DHC was saying, even adolescents like yourselves. Not possible. Barring a little superstitious autoerotism and homosexuality, absolutely nothing. Nothing? In most cases, so they were over 20 years old. 20 years old? Echoed the students in a chorus of sound disbelief. 20, the director repeated. I told you that you'd find it incredible. But what happened? They asked. What were the results? The results were terrible. A deep, resonant voice broke, startling, startlingly into the dialogue. They looked around. On the fringe of the little group stood a stranger. A man of middle height, black-haired, and a crooked n nose, full red lips, eyes very piercing and dark. Terrible, he repeated. The DHC had had at that moment sat down on one of the steel and rubber benches, conveniently scattered through the gardens. But at the sight of the stranger, he sprang to his feet and darted forward, his hand outstretched, smiling with all his teeth, effusive. Controller! What an unexpected pleasure. Boys, what are you thinking of? This is the controller. This is his board ship, Mustafa Mond. Yeah, Mustafa Mond. In the 4,000 rooms of the center, the 4,000 electric shocks simultaneously struck four. Discarnate voices called from the trumpet mouths. Main day shift off. Main, main day shift off duty. Second day shift take over. Main day shift off. In the lift. Hold on. Did I skip? No, I did not. In the lift, on their way up to the changing rooms, Penny Foster and the assistant director of predestination rather pointedly turned their backs on Bernard Marx from the psychology bureau, averted themselves from that unsavory uh, reputation. The faint hum and rattle of machinery still stirred the crimson air of the embryo store. Ships come and go. Ships might come and go. One lupus cover colored face give give place to another. Majestically and for and forever the conveyors crept forward with their load of future men and women. Lilina Crown walked briskly through Lalina Crown walked briskly towards the door. His Ford ship, Mustafa Mond. The eyes of the saluting students almost popped out of their heads. Mustafa Mound, the resident controller for Western Europe, one of the ten world controllers, one of the ten, and he sat down on the bench with the DHC. He was going to stay, to stay, yes, and actually talk to them straight from the horse's mouth, straight from the mouth of Ford himself. Two shrimp brown children emerged from the neighborhood, from the neighboring shrubbery, stared at them for a moment with large, astonished eyes, then returned to their amusements among the leaves. You all remember, said the controller in a strong, deep voice, you all remember, I suppose, that beautiful and inspiring saying of our Fords, history is bunk, history. He repeated, he repeated slowly, is bunk. <sighs> he waved his hand and it was as though with an invisible feather whisk, he had brushed away a little, he had brushed away a little, a little dust and the dust was... Harappa was Ur of the Chadleys, some spider webs, 
and they were Thebes and Babylon and Cisnosos and hold on and they were Thebes or Thebes no I think it's Thebes and Babylon and Cisnosos and my my name hold on I want to get this right. Oh, wow. I've only been reading for 15 minutes. Wow, I've made progress. Okay, my... 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 Felix, my... It's temporarily closed. Uh, but no, I want to... What do you pronounce? Pronunciation. The following pronunciation is brought to you by pronouncenames.com. Thank you. Oh, my C name. Cool. I, I had it right. Uh, Sinosos and my C name. Whisk. Whisk, and where the, and where was Odysseus? Where was Job? Where were Jupiter and Gautama and Jesus? Whisk, and those specks of antique dirt called Athens and Rome, Jerusalem and the Middle Kingdom were all gone. Whisk, the place where Italy had been, the place where Italy had been was empty. Whisk, the cathedrals, whisk, whisk. King Lear and the Thoughts of Pascal. N oh no. <laughs> Hold on. That's right, I need to update my PC. <laughs> I forgot. Yes, but I don't, I don't want... Yeah, you're searching for driver updates. I hope you don't... Try and fucking update now. Let me. Okay, I'm just gonna keep an eye on that. Alright. Um. Uh, Whisk Whisk. King Lear and the Thoughts of Pascal. Whisk, Passion, Whisk, Requiem, Whisk, Symphony, Whisk. Going to the feelings, going to the feelies this evening, Henry? Inquired the assistant predestinator. I hear the new one at the Alhambra is first rate. There's a love scene on a bearskin rug. They say it's marvelous. Every hair of the bear reproduced. The most amazing tactual effects. That's why you're taught no history, the controller was saying. But now the time has come. The DHC looked at him nervously. There were those strange rumors of old forbidden books hidden in a safe in the controller's study. Bibles, poetry. Forth knew that. Mustafa Mond intercepted his anxious gla glance and and the corners of his red lips twitched ir ironically. It's all right, director, he said in a tone of faint de uh, derision. I won't correct. I won't corrupt them. The DHC was overwhelmed with confusion. Those who feel themselves despised do well to look despising. The smile on Bernard Marx's face was contemptuous. Every hair on the bear, indeed. I shall make a point of going, said Henry Foster. Mustafa Mond leaned forward, took a finger, shook a finger at them. Just try to realize it, he said and his voice sent a strange thrill quivering among their diaphragms. 
try to realize it try try to realize what it was like to have a vip viviparous to have a viviparous mother. That smutty word again, but none of them dreamed, this time, smiling. Try to imagine what living with one's family meant. The try they tried, but obviously without the smallest the smallest success. And do you know what a home was? They shook their heads. From her dim crimson cellar, Lilima Crown shot up seventeen stories, turned to the right as she stepped out of the lift, walked down a long corridor, and opened the door marked Girls' Dressing Room, plunged into a deafening chaos of arms and bosoms and underclothing. Torrents of hot water were splashing into and gurgling out of a hundred baths, rumbling and hissing, eighty micro- Eighty vibro-vacuum massage machines were simultaneously kneading and sucking the firm and sunburnt flesh of eighty superb female specimens. Every one of them was taking... Everyone, everyone was talking at the top of her voice. A synthetic music machine was warbling out a super cornet solo. Hello, Fanny said Lenina to a young woman who had the pegs and who had the peg Ah That was just my grandma. She's just asking me about a a thing that was outside. Okay. Hello, Fanny, said Lolina to the young woman who had the pegs and locker next to, next to hers. Fanny worked in the bottling room, and her surname was also Crown. But as the 2,000 million inhabitants of the planet had only... But as the 2,000 million inhabitants of the planet had only 10,000 names between them, the coincidence was not particularly surprising. Lelena pulled at her zippers, downwards on the jacket, downwards with a double-handed gesture at the two that held child, downwards on the jacket, downwards with a double-handed gesture at uh, the two that that held trousers, downwards again to loosen her undergarment, still wearing her shoes and stockings, she walked off toward the bathrooms. Home. Home. A few small rooms stifling over inhabited over inhabited by a man, by a periodically teeming woman, by a ramble of boys and girls of all ages. No air, no space, and under sterilized prison, darkness, disease, and smells. The controller's evocation was so vivid that one of the boys, more sensitive than the rest, turned pale at the mere description and was on, and was on the point of being sick. Lelina got out of the bath, toweled herself dry, took hold of a long, flexible tube and plugged it into the wall presented the nozzle to her breast, as though she meant to commit suicide, pressed down the trigger, and blasted a warm air, and a blast of warmed air dusted her with the finest talcum powder. Eight different scents and eau de cologne, eau de cologne were laid out, were laid on, on in little tab, tabs, in little taps over the wash basin. 
She turned on the third from the left, dabbed herself with side with Chifra? Chifra? Oh, I want to say this right. Chifra? Chifra? Chiper. 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 Okay. Dapped, with her, dapped herself with Chiper and carrying her shoes and stocking in her hand, went out to see if one of the, vi the vibro ma vacuum machines were free. And home was a squalid. And home was a squ squalid. Was a squalid physically as physically. Wait. Oh no. I did the thing. <laughs> okay. And home was as squalid psychically as physically. Physically, it was a rabbit hole. A midden hot a midden hot with the frictions of tightly packed life, reeking with emotion. What suffocating intimacies? What dangerous, insane, obscene relationships between the members of a family group. Maniacally, the mother brooded over her children. Her children. Brooded over them like a cat over its kittens. But a cat could But a cat that could talk. A cat that could say, My baby, my baby, over and over again. My baby and oh, oh, at my breast the little hands, the hunger, and that un unspeakable, agonizing pleasure, till at last my baby sleeps. My baby sleeps with a bubble of white milk at the corner of his mouth. My little baby sleeps. Yes, said Mustafa Mund, nodding his head. You may well shudder. Who are you going out with tonight? Oh, Belina asked, returning from the mic from the vibro vac, like a pearl illuminated from within, pinkly glowing. Nobody? Melina raised her eyebrows in astonishment. I've been feeling rather out of sorts lately. Hold on. Ugh. There we go. I've been feeling rather out of sorts lately. Fanny explained. Dr. Wells advised me to have a pregnancy substitute. But, my dear, you're only 19. The first pregnancy substitute isn't compulsory until 21. I know. I know, dear. But some people are better if they begin earlier. Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah. I know, dear. But some people are better if they begin earlier. Dr. Wells told me that brunettes with wide pelvises like me ought to have their first pregnancy substitute at 17. So I'm really two years late, not two years early. She opened the door of her locker and pointed to the row of boxes and, and labeled files on, on the upper shelf. Syrup of Corpus Luitum. Lilina read the names aloud. Ovarian guaranteed fresh. Ovarian guaranteed fresh. Not to be used after August 1st, AF 632. Mammary gland extract. To be taken three times daily before meals with a little water. Placentin. 
5 cc to be injected intra intravenously every third day. Ugh. Lilina shuddered. How I loathe intravenals, don't you? Yes, but when they do one good... Fanny was a particularly sensible girl. Our Ford, or our Freud, as some, as for some inscrutable reason, he chose to call himself whenever he spoke about of psychological matters. Our Freud had been the first to reveal the appalling dangers of family life. The world of full, the world was full of fathers, it was therefore full of misery, full of mothers, therefore of every kind of perversion of sadism to chastity, full of brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, full of madness and suicide. And yet, among the savages of Samoa and in certain islands off the coast of New Guinea, the tropical Sunday, the tropical sunshine lay like warm honey on the naked bodies of children, shrim tumbling promiscuously down the hibiscus blossoms. Home was any, home was in any one of twenty palm thatched houses, in the, in the Trobriand's conception. And the Trobriand's conception was the work of ancestral ghosts. Nobody has ever heard of a father. Extremes, said the controller. Meat. For the good for the good for the good reason that they were made to meet. Doctor Wells says that three months. Uh, let me say that again. Dr. Wells says that a three months preg pregnancy substitute now, now will make all the difference to my health for the next four, three or four years. Well, I hope he's right, said Alina. But Fanny, do you really mean to say that for the next three months you're not supposed to... Oh, no, dear... Only for a week or two, that's all. I shall spend the evening at the club playing musical bridge. I suppose you're going out? Lelina nodded. Who with? Henry Foster. Again? Fanny's kind, Fanny's kind rather moon-like face took on an incongruous expression of pain and disapproving astonishment. Do you mean to tell me you're still going out with Henry Foster? Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, but there were also husbands, wives, lovers. There were also monogamy and romance. Though you probably don't know what those are, said Mustafa Munn. They shook their heads. Family, monogamy, romance, everywhere exclusiveness. A narrow, a narrow channeling of impulse and energy. But everyone belongs to everyone else, he concluded, citing the hypnopedic proverb, proverb. The students nodded empathetically, em emphatically, yeah, emphatically agreeing with a statement, with a statement which upwards of 62,000 repetitions in, dark, in the dark had made them accept, not merely as true, but as axiomatic, self-evident, utterly indisputable. But after all, Lilina said, but after all, Lilina was protesting, it's only about four months now since I've been having Henry. Only four months? I like that, and what's more? Family, Fanny went on, pointing an accusing finger. There's been nobody else except Henry all that time? Has there? Lilina blushed scarlet, but her eyes... And... But her eyes, the tone of her voice, remained defiant. No, there hasn't been anyone else. 
she answered mo almost truelucently. True what? True. Hold on. Treculently. Treculently. Uh, she answered almost truculently. And I jolly well don't see why there should have been. Oh, she jolly well doesn't know, doesn't see why there should have been. Fanny repeated, as though to an invisible listener behind Lolina's left shoulder. Then, with a sudden change of tone, But seriously, she said, I really do think you ought to be more careful. It's such a bad form to go on and on like that would... It's such horribly bad form to go on and on like this with one man. At 40 or 35, it wouldn't be so bad. But at your age, Lena, no, it really won't do. And you know how strongly D the DHC objects to anything intense or long or long drawn. Four months of Henry Foster without having another man. Why, he'd be furious if he knew. Think of water under pressure in a pipe. They thought of it. I pierce it once, said the controller. What a jet. He pierced it 20 times. There were 20 piddling little fountains. My baby, my baby. Mother. The, the madness is infectious. My love, my one and only precious, precious. Mother, monogamy, romance, high spurts, high spurts the fountain, fierce and foamy white, the wild jet. The urge has, has but a single outlet. My love, my baby, no wonder these poor pre-moderns were mad and wicked and miserable. Their world didn't allow them to take things easily, didn't allow them to be sane, virtuous, ha virtuous happy. With what, what with mothers and lovers, with what with the prohibitionists, with what the with what with the pro the prohibitions, they were not conditioned to obey. What with the temp, what with the temptations and the lonely remorses, what with all the diseases and the endless isolating pain, what with the uncertainties and the poverty, they were forced to feel. They were forced to feel strongly, and feeling strongly, and strongly, what was more, in solitude, in hopelessly individual isolation. How could they be stable? Of course, there's no need to give him up. Have somebody else from time to time, that's all. He has other girls, doesn't he? Lilina admitted it. Of course he does. Trust Henry Foster to be the perfect gentleman, always correct. And then there's the director to think of. You know what a stickler. Nodding. He patted me on the behind this, this afternoon, he said. Uh, said Lilina. There, you see? Fanny was triumphant. That shows what he stands for. The strictest convention conventionality. Stability, said the controller. Stability. No civilization without social stability. No social stability without individual stability. His voice was a trumpet. Listening, they felt larger, warmer. The machine turns, turns, and must keep on turning, forever. It is death if it stands still. A thousand millions a, a thousand a thousand millions uh, scrabbled the crust of the earth. The wheels began to turn. In a hundred and fifty years, there were two thousand millions. Stop all the wheels. In a hundred and fifty weeks, there are once more only a thousand millions. 
A thousand, thousand, thousand men and women have starved to death. Wheels must turn suddenly, but cannot turn un untended. There must be men to tend them, men as steady as the wheels upon their axles, sane men, obedient men, stable in contentment, crying, my baby, my mother, my only, my love, my only, only love, groaning, my sin, my terrible God, screaming with pain, muttering with fever, bemoaning old age and poverty. How can they tend the wheels? And if they cannot tend the wheels, the corpses of a thousand, thousand, thousand men and women would be hard to bury or burn. And after all, Fanny's tone was coaxing, it's not as though there were anything painful or disagreeable about having one or two men besides Henry, and seeing that you ought to be a little bit more promiscuous. Stability, insisted the controller. Stability, the primal and the ultimate need. Stability. Hence all this. With a wave of his hand, he indicated the gardens, the huge building of the conditioning center, the naked children furtive in, furtive in the undergrowth and running across the lawns. Melina looked, Melina shook her head. Somehow, she mused, I hadn't been feeling very keen on promiscuity lately. There are times when one doesn't. Haven't you found that out too, Fanny? Fanny nodded her sympathy and understanding. But one's got to make the effort, she said senten sententiously. One's got to play the game, after all. After all, everyone belongs to everyone else. Yes. Everyone belongs to everyone else, Lelina repeated slowly and, silent, and sighing, was silent for a moment, then, taking Fanny's hand, gave it a little squeeze. It's, it kind of feels very, like, Neon Genesis Evangelion, like the last part, where you just don't know where, what anything is happening. Like, that's, this is what this chapter feels like. It's going from one, from one like setting to another, and they're they're vaguely talking about the same things, but it's just like it's all over the place. Yeah. And it gets even weirder. <laughs> I'm like, wait, hold on. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, um... Lily, yes, everyone else, everyone belongs to everyone else. Lilina repeated slowly and sighing, was silent for a, moment, for a moment, then taking Fanny's hand, gave it a little squeeze. You're quite right, you're quite right, Fanny, as usual. I'll make the effort. Impulse arrested, impulse arrested spills over and the flood is feeling, the flood is passion. The flood is even madness. It depends on the force of the current, the height and strength of the barrier. The unchecked stream flows smoothly down its appointed channels into a calm well-being. The embryo is hungry, day in, day out. It's 
for the greater good. Yep, but I don't know when. <clears throat> when um, it gets to that point where they explain how they have sex, but it is very different. It's like extremely different. It's not even sex. Spoilers, but uh, I hope soon they'll they'll um, they'll uh, talk about it. Yeah, no. All right. The embryo is hungry, day in and day out. The blood surrogate pump increased, unceasingly turns at 800 revolutions a minute. The decanted infant howls. At once a nurse appears with a bottle of external secretion. Feeling lurks in that interval of time between desire and its con consummation. Shorten that interval. Break down all those unnecessary barriers. Fortunate boys, said the controller. No pains have been spared to make your lives emotionally easy. To, to preserve you so far as that is possible from having emotions at all. Ford's in his, Ford's in his fliver. Ford's in his fliver, murmured the DHC. All well's with the world. All's well with the world. Melina Crown, said Henry, echoing the assistant predestinator's question as he zipped up his trousers. Oh, she's a splendid girl. Wonderfully... pneumatic? I want to make sure I'm saying that right. Pneumatic. Oh yeah, I am saying it right. Okay, uh, 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 where was I, where was I, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, this is a long-ass chapter, too. Wait, I still have ten more pages to go on this one. It's a long one. And so is the other one. So I think I'm only going to do two, maybe two, if I can do two. I think I can. All right. Um, <sighs> Lilina Crown, said Henry Foster, echoing the assistant predestinator's question as he zipped up his trousers. Oh, she's a splendid girl. Wonderfully pneumatic. I'm surprised you haven't had her. I can't think how it is I haven't, said the assistant predestinator. I certainly will at the first opportunity. From his place on the opposite side of the changing room aisle, Bernard Marx overheard what they were saying and turned pale. And to tell the truth, wait, hold on. Okay. And to tell the truth, said Lelina, I'm beginning to get just a tiny bit bored, but with nothing but Henry every day. She pulled on her left stocking. Do you know Bernard Marx? She asked in a tone whose excessive casualness was evidently forced. Fanny looked startled. You don't mean to say? Why not? Bernard's an alpha plus. Besides, he asked me to go on one of the savage reservations with him. I've wanted to see a savage re I've always wanted to see a savage reservation. But his reputation. What do I care about his reputation? They say he doesn't like obstacle golf. They say, they say, mocked Lilina. 
And then he spends most of his time by himself. Alone. There was a horror in Fanny's voice. Well, he won't be alone when he's with me. And anyhow, why are people so beastly to him? I think he's rather sweet. She smiled to herself. How absurdly shy he had been. Frightened, almost, as though she were the world controller and he a gamma minus machine minder. Consider your own lives, said Mustafa Mond. Has any of you ever encountered an insurmountable obstacle? The question was always answered by a, seg by a negative silence. Has any of you been compelled to live through a long time interval between the consciousness of a desire and its fulfillment? Well, began one of the boys and hesitated. Speak up, said the DHC. Don't keep his fortune waiting. I once had to wake. N I once. I once had to wait nearly four weeks before a girl I wanted would let me have her. And you felt a strong emotion in consequence? Horrible. Horrible precisely, said the controller. Our ancestors were so stupid and short-minded that when the first reformers came along and offered to deliver them from those horrible emotions, they wouldn't have anything to do with them. Talking about her as though she were a piece of meat. Talking about her as though she were a bit of meat. Bernard ground his teeth. Have her here, have her there, like mutton. Degrading her so much. Degrading her to so much mutton. She said she'd think it over. She said she'd give me an answer this week. Oh, Ford, Ford, Ford. He would have liked to go up to them and hit them in the face, hard, again and again. Yes, I really do advise you try her, Henry Foster was saying. Take, ectogen take ectogenesis. P. Fitzner and Kawaguchi had got the whole technique worked out. But when the governments look at it, no, there was something called Christianity. Women were forced to go on being viviparous. He's so ugly, said Fanny, but I rather like his looks. And then so small, Fanny made a grimace. Smallness was so horribly and typically low caste. <clears throat> I think that's rather sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's rather sweet, said Lilina. One feels one I think, I don't know if you heard that right, but yeah, I do, I do think they have their own autonomy, a power over their own autonomy. Yeah, no, they are, they are. <clears throat> Hold on, let me drink some water. <clears throat> Alrighty. Um, I think that's rather sweet, said Lilina. 
One feels one would like to pet him. You know, like a cat. Fanny was shocked. They say somebody made a mistake when he was still in the bottle. Thought he was a gamma and put alcohol in his blood surrogate. That's why he's so stunted. What nonsense! Melina was indig indignant. Sleep teaching was prohibited in England. There was something called liberalism. Parliament, if you know what that was, passed a law against it. The records survive. The records survive. Speech is about liberty of the subject. Liberty to be inefficient and miserable. Freedom to be a round peg in a square hole. But, my dear chap, you're welcome, I assure you, you're welcome. Henry Foster patted the assistant predestinator on the shoulder. Everyone belongs to everyone else, after all. One hundred repetitions, three nights a week for four years, thought Bernard Marx, who was a specialist on hypnopedia. Uh, 62,400 repetitions make one truth. Idiots. Or the caste system. Constantly, constantly proposed, constantly reject rejected. There was something called democracy, as though men were more than psychochemically equal. Physic physical, yeah, physical chemically equal. Well, all I can say is that I'm going to accept his invitation. Bernard hated them, hated them, but they were too. They were large, they were strong. Then the Nine Years' War began in AF-141. Yeah, this is where the book starts to be like Neon Genesis Evangelion. Because it goes literally back and forth, back and forth. Here. Let me show you a picture because you're going to think I'm like, where are you going? Hold on. Where, where are we right now? But this is literally the book right now. Like, it was consistent going, like, going from, like, one paragraph was one scene and another paragraph was another scene. But now it's just, like, one sentence is one thing and another sentence is another scene. So, don't think I'm just going over, I'm just reading the book. Oh, yeah, I should probably let the viewer see. Oh, wait. Oh, shit, did I put that in? Oh, I put that in the wrong one. There we go. This is what it looks like. I am not crazy. This is, this is like... And that's the, ne the next couple of pages, too. It's just one line, then another line, and then another line, and then another line. Okay. <clears throat> well, all I could say is that I'm going to accept his invitation. Bernard hated them. Hated them. But they were too, they were large, they were strong. Then the Nine Years' War began in AF-141. Not even if it were true about the alcohol and his blood surrogate. Phosgene chloropicrin, chloropicrin, ethyl-ideoacetate, ideoacetate. Diphenylclerazine? Triclomuffle? Yeah, fucking, do you see these big words I have to read? Those big words right there? Pretty sure a biologist would be able to, like, read those. <clears throat> uh, 
And they're crazy camel girls. And on the next page, it gives me a chemical formula. I don't know how I'm going to state that. Hold on. I want to read these right, you guys. So I got ID iodoacetate. Okay, I got that. Defen... Defen... Nickel... Okay. Defen... Defen... Watch this be a made up thing. Defend. No, I didn't want that. I wanted the other the other one. Hold on. Pronunciation. Yeah, it doesn't... That doesn't help me. I need an actual human being to say it. Diphenyl chlorosine. I guess that's right. Diphenyl chlorosine. Fucking crazy. Diphenyl chlorosine. And hopefully it never comes up again. I hope. I hope. Okay. Phosgene, chloropicrin, ethyl idiol, iodous acetate, difficult, I'm defenochlorosine, I'm sorry, trichlomethyl, chloroformate, dichlorethyl, Dichlorophyll sulfide, not to mention hydroxyanic acid. Oh my hi. god, hi! <laughs> oh, you're here early! My mom is here early. Uh, I uh, vacuumed the floor. I was gonna.
All right. I think I'm only going to read this chapter. And then maybe I'll read tomorrow. Yeah, I think this chapter, because, like, the other chapter is pretty long, too. Like, 20 pages long. And I'm just like, I thought my parents were going to be here for, like, another hour. But I guess they were really slow. Okay. Uh, but yeah, basically Fanny was just, uh, naming a bunch of, like, other chemicals that, I guess, what was the name they want, she, she wanted to get with again? Oh, Bernard! Yeah, and she's, uh, yeah, not to mention hydrocyanic acid, which I simply don't believe, Lilina concluded. The noise of the 14,000 air airplanes advancing in open border, but in the Kerfurstadam and the 8th Aras Dissonant, Yeah, but in the Kerfurstin Dam and the 8th Iran Descendment, the explosion of the anthrax bombs is hardly louder than the popping of a paper bag. Because I do want to see a savage reservation. CH, I think it's chloroform 8. I really don't know. I might type this in and see what it gives me. Because I don't know what that's supposed to say. CH8 C C 6 H two N O two eight plus H G C N O two. Okay. Okay, meaning. Because what does this mean? Well, I'm just going to read it out how it looks because I don't want to deal with it. So CH8, C6, H2, and then in parentheses, NO2, in parentheses, 8, plus HG, parentheses, CNO, in parentheses, uh, 2, 
equals, well, what? An enormous hill on the ground, a pile of masonry, some bits of flesh and mucus, a foot with a, with a boot still on it, flying through the air and landing flop in the middle of the ger geraniums, the scarlet ones, such a splendid show of summer. You're hopeless, Lelina. I give you up. The Russian technique for infecting water supplies was particularly ingenious. Back turned back. Fanny and Lelina continued their changing in silence. The Nine Years' War, the Great Economic Collapse. There, had, there was a choice between world control and, cons and destruction. Stability and... Fanny crowns a nice girl too, said the assistant predestinator. In the nurseries, the elementary class consciousness lesson. In the nurseries, the elementary class con consciousness lesson lesson was over. The voices were adapting future demand. The voices were adapting future demand to future industrial supply. I do love flying, they whispered. I do love flying. I do love having new clothes. I do love. Liberalism, of course, was dead of anthrax, but all the same, you couldn't do things by force. Not newly, not nearly so pneumatic as Lalina. Oh, not nearly. But clothes are beastly, continued the untiring whisper. We always throw away old clothes. Ending is better than mending. Ending is better than mending. Ending is better. Government's an affair of sitting, not hitting. You rule with the brains and the buttocks, but never with the fists. For example, there was the there was the, constri the conscription of consumption. There, I'm ready, said Lolina. But Fanny remained speechless and averted. Let's make peace, Fanny darling. Every man, woman, and child compelled to consume so much a year in the interests of in industry. The sole result. Ending is better than mending. The more stitches, the less riches. The more stitches. One of these days, said Fanny, with dismissal emphasis, with dismal em emphasis, you'll get into trouble. Conscientious, conscientious, conscientious objection on an enormous scale. Anything to not consume. Back to nature. I do love flying. I do love flying. Yeah. This is going to be the rest of the chapter. <laughs> I'm sorry. It doesn't go back to normal. It doesn't go back to normal until the last, last page, sort of. So you're just going to have to keep up with this Neon Genesis, whatever. Like, transition back and forth. Yes, back to, cul back to culture. Yes, actually to culture. You can't consume much if you sit still and read books. Do I look all right? Lolina asked. Her jacket was made of bottle green acetate cloth with green viscose fur at the cuffs and collar. 800 simple leifer leifers were mowed down by machine guns at, at Golders Green. Ending is better than mending. Ending is better than mending. Green corduroy shorts and white viscose woolen stockings turned down below the knee. Then came the famous British Museum Museum Massacre. Two thousand culture fans gassed with dichloroethyl 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 sulfide. A green and white jockey cap sh shaded Lolina's eyes. Her shoes were green, bright green and highly polished. In the end, said Ms. Mustafa Mon, the controllers realized that force was no good. The slower, 
but indefinitely surer methods of e ectogenesis, neo-Pavlovian conditioning, and hypnopedia. And round her waist, she wore a silver-mounted green Morocco surrogate cartridge belt, bulging. For Lilina was not a free martin with the relegation with the regulation supply of contraception contraceptives. The discoveries of Pfitzner and Kawaguchi were less made of you made use of. An intensive propaganda against viviparous reproduction reproduction. Perfect, cried Fanny enthusiastically. She could never resist Lalina's charm for long. And what a perfectly sweet Malthusian belt. Accompanied by a campaign against the past, by the closing of museums, the blowing up of historical monuments, luckily most of them had already been destroyed during the Nine Years' War, by the suppression of all books published before AF-150. I simply must get one like it said Fanny. There were some things called the pyramids, for example. My old, my old black patent brandoiler, bandoiler, and a man called Shakespeare. You've never heard of them, of course. It's an absolute disgrace, that bandoiler, bandoiler of, my, of mine. Such are the advantages of a really scientific education. The more stitches, the less riches. The more stitches, the less. The introduction of our Ford's first T model. I've had it nearly three months. Chosen as the opening date of a new era. Ending is better than mending. Ending is better. There was a thing, as I've said before, called Christianity. Ending is better than mending. The ethics and philosophy of underconsumption. I love new clothes. I love new clothes. I love so essential when there was under so essential when there was underproduction. But in an age of machines and the fixation of nitrogen, positively a crime against society. Henry Foster gave it to me. All crosses had their their tops cut and became T's. There was, a there was also a thing called God. It's real Morocco sur surrogate. We have a world state now, and Ford's Day celebrations and community sings in solidarity services. Ford, how I hate them. Uh, Bernard Marx was thinking. There was a thing called heaven, but all the same, they used to drink enormous quantities of alcohol, like meat, so much like meat. There was a thing called the soul and a thing called immortality. Do ask Henry where he got it. But they used to take morphia and cocaine. And what makes it worse? She thinks, her, she thinks of herself as meat. 2,000 pharmacologists and biochemists were subsidized in AF-178. He does look glum, said the assistant predestinator, pointing at Bernard Marx. Six years later, it was being produced commercially. The perfect drug. Let's bait him. Euphoric, narcotic, pleasantly hallucin hallucinant, hallucinant. Hallucinant. Glum marks glum. The clap on the shoulder made him... Oh, nice. The clap on the shoulder made him look up. Made him start. Look up. It was that brute, Henry Foster. What you need, what you need is a gram of Soma. All the advantages of Christianity and alcohol None of their defects. Ford, I should like to kill him. But all he did was say, no thank you, and fend off the proffered tube of tablets. Take a holiday from reality whenever you like, and come back without so much as a headache or a mythology. Take it. 
insisted Henry Foster. Take it. Stability is practically assured. One cubic centimeter cures ten gloomy sentiments, said the assistant predestinator, citing a piece of homely hypnopedic wisdom. With homely hypnopedic wisdom. It only remained to conquer old age. Damn you. Damn you, shouted Bernard, Bernard, Bernard Marx. Hoity-toity. Gonetto hormones, transfusion of young blood, magnesium salts. And you remember that a gram is better than a dam. And do you remember that a gram is better than a dam? They went out laughing. All the psychological stigmata of old age had been abolished, and among with them, of course. Don't forget to ask him about the, Methus the Malthusian belt, said Fanny. Along with them, all the old man's mental peculiarities. Characters remain con constant throughout a whole lifetime. Two rounds of obstacle hole to get through before dark. I must fly. Work, play, at 60, at 60 our powers or tastes are what they were at 17. Old men in the old bad days used to renounce, retire, and take to, take to religion, spend, spend their time reading, thinking, thinking, idiots, swine, Bernard Marx was saying to himself as he walked down the corridor to the lift. Now, such is progress. The old men work, the old men copulate, the old men have no time, no leisure from pleasure. Not a moment to sit down and think, or if ever, by some unlucky chance, such a crevice of time should yawn in solid substance of their distractions. There was always soma, delicious soma, half a gram for half a holiday, a gram for a weekend, two grams for a trip to the gorgeous east, three for a dark eternity on the moon, returning once they find themselves on the other side of the crevice, safe on the ground, the solid ground of daily labor and distraction, scampering from feely to feely, from girl to a pneumatic girl, from electromagnetic golf course to... Go away, little girl, shouted the DHC angrily. Go away, little boy. Can't you see that his Ford ship is busy? Go and do your erotic place somewhere else. Suffer, little children, said the controller. So slowly, majestically, with a faint humming of machinery, the conveyors moved forward. 33 centimeters an hour. In the red darkness glinted innumerable rubies. And that is the end <laughs> of chapter three. Thank you so much for listening to that. That was a trip. <laughs>